Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bel Fatih. His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Royal Highness conveyed the regards of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and His Highness conveyed the Emir's regards to His Majesty as well. His Royal Highness expressed his congratulations on the occasion of Kuwait's National Day and affirmed the deep rooted relations between the two countries and people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. His Royal Highness conveyed the regards of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and His Highness conveyed the Emir's regards to His Majesty as well. His Royal Highness expressed his congratulations on the occasion of Kuwait's National Day and affirmed the deep rooted relations between the two countries and people. The Minister of Information Ali bin Mohammed al ramehi lauded the meeting of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister with the editors-in-chief of local newspapers, praising His Royal Highness's comprehensive modern vision on ways to develop government work and strengthen security, justice and rule of law under the leadership of His Majesty the King. The Minister stressed that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister has set the priorities of national action with sincere resolve, unified team Bahrain spirit and an ambitious vision that calls for optimism, creativity, excellence and development of citizens who are the nation's real asset and pillar of its achievements in line with the royal directives as well as the principles of the National Action Charter and the Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030. According to His Royal Highness's vision, the citizens are also the cornerstone for the achievement of the goals of the government plan in partnership with the legislative branch within an integrated integrated legal, judicial and executive system that supports human rights, respect, economic openness and private sector growth. The minister extended deepest thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his constant support to responsible freedom of opinion and expression, transparent word and enlightened national press, praising His Royal Highness's directives to refer a new and modern press and media law to the legislative branch as soon as possible. The Executive Committee of the Arab Inter-Parliamentary Union, headed by the United Arab Emirates, held a virtual meeting to coordinate the agenda of the 27th session, where the committee discussed the report of the Secretary-General of the Arab Parliamentary Union containing the implementation of the decisions of the 29th Conference and the 30th Emergency Conference of the Arab Parliamentary Union. The meeting also discussed the preparation for the agenda of the 31st upcoming conference, as well as the draft work program and the draft budget for 2021 in addition to the Arab Parliamentary Excellence Award. The second deputy speaker of the Representatives Council and member of the Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain, Representative Ali Zayed, affirmed that based on the Kingdom's interest, encouragement and initiatives to activate joint Arab Parliamentary work and on the directives of His Majesty the King, the Parliamentary Division contributed several recommendations. The second deputy speaker added that based on our Article 18 of the Arab Parliamentary Union Charter, the Kingdom of Bahrain proposed adding a clause to the agenda of the next conference regarding Arab coordination that concerns with the provision of vaccines against COVID-19 as it is possible for the Union to put forward an initiative to provide the vaccine in the Arab region. The second Deputy Speaker of Representatives Council praised the remarkable developments and achievements made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of parliamentary diplomacy which made the Kingdom a role model in regional and international forums. The Secretary General of the Representatives Council, Councillor Rashid Mohammed Bounejma, headed the Arab Group at the virtual meeting of the General Secretaries of the Interparliamentary Union, which included holding a discussion session entitled How Parliaments Cope in the Time and Conditions of the Epidemic. The meeting's aim was to provide the General Secretaries the opportunity to exchange experiences with their peers in order in other parliaments by discussing uh, the challenges and 
and solutions adopted by their parliaments in addition to the proposed solutions that will help the participants overcome the challenges posed by the epidemic. The Secretary General praised the royal directives of His Majesty the King and the efforts of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in facing the repercussions of the spread of the coronavirus which garnered the kingdoms of Bahrain's international attention for its ability in controlling the outbreak of the pandemic. Bunajba added that the representative council with a clear direction from the Speaker of Parliament has taken a number of precautionary measures since the start of the pandemic which has ensured the continuation of constitutional work. The United Nations Resident Coordinator Mohammed Zarqani expressed his sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the ratification and issuance of the corrective justice law for children in the Kingdom of Bahrain. As Zarqani explained that the promulgation of the law is a very important step that shows the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to enhancing compliance with international conventions on human rights in a manner that justifies restorative justice and preserving children's lives from abuse by establishing the Judicial Committee for Childhood and the Child Protection Center. For her part, the Regional Representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Rawait al Hajj, welcomed the adoption of the law, noting that it was a response to the joint efforts made to take into account the best interests of the child. For his part, the Representative of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime for the Gulf Region, Dr. Hatem Ali, said that the law is the result of the wide-ranging process of consultations and it shows the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain to fulfill its international obligations. The representative of UNICEF in the Gulf region, Tayyip Adem, welcomed the announcement and emphasized that the focus on restorative justice and the best interests of children at all times indicates the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness to undertake reforms in the field of justice, noting that establishment of the Judicial Committee for Childhood and Center Child protection in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Assistant Undersecretary for Public Health and Head of the Vaccination Committee at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Maryam Ibrahim Al Hajri, announced the approval by the members of the Vaccination Committee in the Kingdom of Bahrain to vaccinate breastfeeding mothers and pregnant women with two types of vaccines against the coronavirus that were approved for use in the Kingdom, namely Sinopharm and Pfizer Puntech. After the committee studied all recommendations issued by the WHO Vaccine Advisory Group and the Center for Disease control in the United States of America related to providing adequate protection for this group by providing vaccinations in order to maintain their health and safety by acquiring immunity to the virus. Dr. al Hajri noted that given the fact that breastfeeding mothers and pregnant women are among the groups most vulnerable to complications from the coronavirus, considerations has been taken to secure vaccination to prevent infection with the virus or its complications that may be dangerous to them, especially in light of the rapid spread of the new mutated strain. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 5,155 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 290,103. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 6,922 with 809 recoveries, 637 registered new cases. 218 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 408 are contacts of active cases and 11 are travel-related. The Ministry announced the two deaths from COVID-19, a male citizen aged 81 and a female citizen aged 77 and expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.